Today is the 7th of October 2013. My name is Ben Fielden and this interview is for Ming Ai London Institute, British China's Sports Sports Heritage. Um, could I begin by asking your name, please? My name is Set Yun. And where were you born? I, born? I was born in Hong Kong. And can you tell me a little bit about your family? I'm, I'm married. My wife's uh, name's Kitty, uh, with a daughter who's 21 now, and the last year in the university. And we all live in the UK at the moment. And do you have any brothers and sisters? I got no brother, but four sisters. I'm right in the middle. And uh, what work did your mother and father do? My father, he's retired actually now, but uh, when in, he retired in the late 80s, he was in a, what's it called, a public works department in Hong Kong government, civil servant. Basically, yeah. and my mum, she just passed away two years ago, and she was working in like uh, an, another department of the Hong Kong government, looking after children. Yeah, as my mother and dad. And what education did you have? I'm not well educated, and I haven't completed my secondary school because I, I was naughty, and. Uh, I just finished in three and a half years, compared with five, and left it, left, left school and, and working in, in the society and found uh, Johnny Army's better. And, and I, I got a lot of education, qualification from the army. Yeah. And what else did you do before you joined the army? Lots. <laughs> Uh, mainly for you know in Hong Kong at the time it was seventies you know a lot of uh, industrial uh, uh, factories etc etc or selling and salesmen you know and very very little pieces and before I joined the army as a main career as I so when and where did you join the army when when and where uh, I joined the army in nineteen eighty one in Hong Kong it is from there. And what was your original motivation for joining the army? As I mentioned earlier, I just look for fun, for the initial motivation, you know, but I found it's not as fun mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. yeah. And could you describe your first day of joining the army? Excited. Uh, everything fresh to me, I've never seen that before, you know, seeing the people and obviously myself joining come together as a group of 20, 30 people under the training or shouting by, shouted by, by the instructors, uh, touch weapon first time, rifles, but particularly in the early age it was LSR, which called, uh, I can't remember the full name now, it's a long, long rifle and very, very heavy to me. That's my first impression to join the army and I, I suspected myself, can I cope it? Which I did eventually. <laughs> That's my first impression. And what led to moving from Hong Kong to the UK? Well, obviously, the reason is 1997 when Hong Kong handed it over to China. And before they handed it over, I, I had a chance to transfer from, from, from HKMNC to UK, one of the regiments, uh, which is called Military Police Guard Service, which is which is, it was part of a uh, Royal Military Police and I was in the uh, 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 Royal Military Police so I, did, I took the chance and I was lucky to, I had uh, a British passport and that was the basic right criteria mm -hmm. and because I was an existing soldier so it's just normal transfer as I'm a lucky, lucky, lucky one yeah, that was the reason why I, I transfer and also look at my family uh, because I got a five daughter, a uh, five years, five years old daughter at the time. So I think I, I believe you know the the education system in this country is far better than Hong Kong, and I I used the life in the army, so I I, I was so confident you know uh, to carry on my my my, my, my career or, or or restart my career in the UK, which which is I did and. Uh, I found it's a correct decision. So you deliberately made the choice to move before the handover. Yeah, very very short uh, short time or 
important for me to, to make decision. Talking talking about three days, with vision, yeah. Because otherwise, I, well, put it this way, I would become jobless anyway. So why not try? If I if I if I'm not successful, I go I go back. That's what that's that's what I thought. Well, I think yeah, still I believe and I, I I did it. And whilst you were in Hong Kong, you um, worked in countering illegal immigrants crossing yes. the border. Yeah. Could you tell us anything about that? Uh, I spent almost 10 years on the border duties uh, as a permanent staff. That means uh, most of the uh, uh, regiments, you know, they, just for, uh, they have the border duty for three, four months. But we are the, we were the, 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 the permanent staff throughout the year, no matter who is like we we got five uh Gurkha battalions, one British battalion and one sometimes uh, with uh, Hong Kong regiment, which is another uh, like TA, Territory Army in Hong Kong, and also we got uh, Hong Kong police and to join the duties. But we are the permanent staff because we know exactly what they are. And obviously, they they knew from from, from uh, for for the, for the duties. So they need somebody uh, as a permanent to to let to lead to lead them to do whatever whatever duties they uh, could be uh, on the hill, could be on, on the sea, could be anything. Yeah, and it's it's very very exciting. Yeah, especially when at the time I I joined, what was looking at ninety eighty one eighty two. Every night, uh, we applaud from the counties about uh, about five hundred people arrested, and another one hundred maybe they have escaped. Yeah, successfully. Yeah, very very busy, and uh, my motivation was I was young, obviously at the time nineteen, I think nineteen years old. Yeah, and it seems to me that. As a real soldier, I came with us, uh, ambush everything, radio. We we are not allowed to 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 use torch, you know, hand signals, everything, and we use dog, yeah, for searching, uh, lots of tactics you know, learned on on the field. You know, so like real army, so I I I very enjoyed it, and one of one of. The, my 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 biggest uh, not incident, but it's operation uh, in on border is uh, at the t- after nineteen eighty nine when the Tiananmen Square incident. Uh, there's a lots of lots of people, particularly you know, university students, they, they came across from 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 border, and we got a, a special duty for that, but special. Uh, Arrangement for for that after after arrested yeah I pass on some special units or special department to do with uh, which is one of my my, my big memory on border duties yeah and are there any other unforgettable experiences that you've had from the army uh, a lot but I think just think about when I was the uh, Royal Military Police yeah. I dealt with uh, murder. It was the first time I seen in my life a dead body in front of me. I, have, I, I was the first one to attend the scene because I was in the what they call uh, general police duty, which is wear uniform. Yeah, and the second part is the SIB uh, special investigation branch, which is civilian dress. Yeah, and uh, uniform people always attend the scene first. Like like this country, long yeah, long police attend, do the first uh, investigation. Yeah, is any any sus- suspect we arrested or or cordon off the area, to you know to protect evidence everything you know, and that was the one of my 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 my, my important memories you know, in my in my uh, police duty. Yeah. And uh, I was arrested. You know, the murder, a suspected murder, murderer at the time. Uh, it was a family, a father that killed a, 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 his son. It's, it's a, in a Gurkha battalion, Mary Quarters, which is very, very good memories. Obviously, bad news, but good memories for me. To you know, I have done a, a, 
is a big job for me. Another one is a, a, f a theft, but it's no more theft, but it, it took me two days to take statements because uh, as it was it called, uh, the department called uh, Quartermaster Department, which is stores basically. They got about 30 people, I think it's 20, 20 yeah, about 30 people, but uh, 28, I think 28, 27 maybe, uh, they're Chinese, yeah, and three British. Well, according to the regulation, we have to take the statement from our original language, uh, but because of, we, are, we, are in, we are in the British Army, I have to translate to English for 27. So make it 54 plus original three, so it took me two days plus. Uh, six hours of fingerprints, everything. You know, we hadn't got DNA before. You know, in the eighties, nineties, maybe. Uh, a lot of work, and it took me three days to complete uh, the initial, the initial uh, works, which is normally take half uh, half day, which is an, another memory. And also, uh, foreign soldiers fighting, U.S. Navy against British soldiers in the pub area, yeah. I can't believe it's about 30, 40 people fighting together, each other, you can't recognize who is who, yeah. I was in the middle with the short patrols, well, you know, the, all, the, all the foreign uh, forces, they have spent, when they're when, when on, on the city, or visit, visit the city, like Hong Kong, they have to, keep, uh, to, to provide about 20 to 30 people as a short patrol people, and because I was, again, Always in the first time, the first first man to attend the scene, I was scared by the 30, 40 people. Everybody taller than me, bigger than me. Yeah, I'm, you see my size, especially, you know. But as another memory, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, very, very good experience when I was in the uh, Royal Military Police. Yeah, I'm proud of this. Um, and what was life like in the army more generally? Like, um, can you describe a typical day for yourself? at any point? What particular day? A particular, I mean, I know you've served in lots of different areas, but just something mm -hmm. you'd say is quite typical. Typical, um, I think one of my big, big job, yeah, uh, to protect two princes, uh, Prince William and Prince Harry. They were uh, under the training, flying, flying training, pilot as a pilot training in, in my camp because my position is I'm responsible to provide security and also obviously protect human life obviously important men, important people the two princes uh, I spent three years to be with them, uh, not, obviously not only me, with, with my team and also uh, we got uh, the what's it called, personal protection officer from the royal about four to three, five people, and also we got uh, MOD police to provide arm, arm, arm police, another four or five people together, and my team, I got, in every shift, we got about six to seven people, yeah. and also we got uh, the home office police, yeah, a lot of liaisons, meetings, you know, and rehearsal, uh, recce's, etc., etc., it took me three years. It's a big job to me, and which is success. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm more than happy. You know, I take it again. If, it, but could be, hap could happen, could happen again. You know, uh, Prince may come back to, to the, to, to, to the, to the air corps to, to get another high level of flying training. I never, I never, you never know. So this is my one of the but but it's been day for me. Um, and on one of the during those three years, what would your schedule be like for the day? Uh, I won't tell you too much detail, but in general, obviously, uh, terrorist attack is one of them to to prevent uh, intrusion, uh, particular media, because like royal family, you know this girl, you know they're very attract attracted for for media. Whatever they go, whatever they say, whatever they do, we we, we, we capture it, yeah. And we have, we avoid, we try to prevent uh, media's. At, at one time, it's about thirty, no, maybe twenty, twenty-five, you know, uh, press in the same time coming together, and they they, they go, they went everywhere. And the camp, my camp was 
but at the moment still yeah it's approximately about four mile perimeter perimeter fence is a four mile so it's a very very difficult to cover every 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 everywhere move around the, the camp they, they come from nowhere they, you know, do you know what I mean they try to to use uh, dis something to do uh, distraction you know they do something in on this side actually they, they try to get into the camp on the other side taking photograph etc etc uh, which is it was very difficult but look uh, when I look back it was fun <laughs> yeah because it's not actual it's not actual attack or, or, or any 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 crime at all just uh, media always you know to try to try to get what they want and on the paper on the TV on the read radio etc etc and on the our side try to protect everything which is to me is a bit fun when I look back yeah when, when I was there it's very hard you know because it's royal family again <laughs> yeah um, and what was the food like that you ate during the army food yeah. what, what do you mean food eating not too bad, that's what I can say, yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay, yeah, uh, especially uh, we, we got uh, obviously junior rank mess and senior rank mess and, 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 and officers mess etc, so different, different kind, because I, my, 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 my position and yeah, my appointment, I'm, I'm a staff sergeant, you know, so I, I, I'm able to get into sergeant's mess, which is middle class, yeah, it's not too bad, it's not too good. Yeah, acceptable. Yeah, and the good thing is, uh, in the army, you pay less than normal. Let's say, for instance, if, it, uh, have, if you're having a, a, a full breakfast in, in, in a normal price in, in public, uh, uh, talk about five pounds. Yeah, in, in the army, you'll probably pay one pound fifty. Yeah, you got the same thing. Yeah, so, it's saving money. And what did you do for recreation when you were? Rec recreation. Uh, you talk about sailing, adventure training, sort of thing. Yeah, what would you do for fun? Myself, uh, in my old time in the army, I'm very pro proactive. At, uh, at, 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 uh, I was call myself spot, so spotty. Yeah, I played football, swimming, running. Uh, competition, yeah. Uh, I, I did a little bit diving course, uh, but during the army life, you always do something, uh, activities, why you know sports, whatever. Yeah. So I can't really recall what I've done in so many, and uh, especially because I was, I, I say I was, I'm still qualified, but too old to say now. It's a physical, physical training instructor. So, physical instructor is responsible for physical train, physical training, and also some uh, up sailing, rock climbing, diving, etc., etc. Adventure training. So, I moved out. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And what kind of salary did you get from working in the army? Two different. <laughs> when I was in Hong Kong, the salary was far, far better than, and I'm here at the moment. Uh, tell you the truth. <coughs> The salary, I, I'm, don't, I'm not going to tell you the figure, but the, the salary I, I'm, I'm getting at the moment is just equal up as before 97, 1997. So talking about 16 years, yeah, I'm, I'm still getting the same pay, but my rank is too high up. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame in the army. And what were your superiors like and how did they treat the subordinates? Uh, Again, military, obviously, discipline, yeah, and it's quite straightforward, you know, and in the old time, you, you, you got a lot of shouting, yeah, Just make it work, it's got to be shout, shouted, yeah, but nowadays, the, the army policy or MOD policy changed, yeah, obviously, uh, the younger people are getting more, better treated, they got chance to feedback, to ask, in the old time, you won't be able to. You won't be able to, to ask anything. Just do it. Just do what you told. But nowadays, a lot, a lot of freedom. Let's say, and uh, I don't know if it's better or, or, or worse. You know, it depends what what, what angle, which which angle you're looking at. Yeah. Uh, in the old time, uh, when a superior giving an order or instruction, you get it back straight away. 
But now you take double time or maybe triple time to get this back. You're encouraging the people, you can shout to the people. Yeah, that's what I see at the moment. I'm, I'm at the moment, it's a middleman, I got my superior. Yeah, I never get shouts. Yeah, I, I do the same way, I, I, I never shout to, to my subordinates. But talking about effective efficiency, yeah, it's not as good as before. I, I can tell. Because I ask, I ask my subordinates to do, to, to, to do something, yeah, I won't get it until two weeks later. <laughs> that's that's, that's, the, that's the what I see at the moment. And superior tweet, uh, because at, at the moment, army, or particularly army, I don't know navy or, 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 or air forces, but I believe it would be the same. We got uh, some rules to apply, like equal, equality, diversity, you know, uh, avoid to, 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 ter- to, to say any uh, aggressive words, uh, harassment, bullying, sort of thing. It's, it's, uh, the army took it so serious. So, uh, what I can see across the board, yeah, the superior is very, very careful when, when you do something or say something. Yeah. And be, most, of, most of them, I will say, is it, it, we've been treated well, yeah, in general. And um, in terms of this country, um, do you think that the Chinese are well recognised um, in remember in the Remembrance Day ceremony? I and oh, sort sorry. of the you know military remembrance. I I think it's it's fair to say uh, it doesn't matter what race you are, you are Chinese Japanese Philippine uh, or or British whatever because that's the remembrance. Day, yeah, it's for for everybody who give up their life, you know, in in the world, in in in, in the war, in the previous war, first first world war, second world war, or whatever war, yeah. So it doesn't matter who who's come from, and everybody's got respect. Yeah, that's why I see. It. Yeah. And um, what would you say that your work ethic is? Where does it come from? What's that mean? Your work ethic. Like, what is it that motivates you in your job? Uh, at the moment, I, I think it is it's my job. Because I'm reaching to the end of my career. I, I completed 33 years. In the old time, I, I, I took it uh, as a fun, yeah, because I was young, and I very brave to do some something different, you know, dangerous. Well, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I didn't mind. But now I, I got because I got my family, so I got to consider something my family first. So, uh, and I, I, I'm grown up and more mature, so I have to. Sometimes I may, I may delay my decision to make work, you know, and because of my age and, but that's, I'm still, uh, how how to say this. Uh, I see I took t- t- this job is very, and I'm, I'm proud of this, and I'm, I'm working hard every day, I believe. <laughs> and what lessons do you think that you've learned from your career in the army? Learn. Uh, I learned a lot. Yeah. That's what you, what you mean. Um, train. I've been, been, been trained well. Um, to build up my confidence. Yeah, my my quality, yeah, my capability, uh, ability, and uh, I think confidence confidence is very important to me. I think because I was very shy when I was young. Uh, at the moment, because my 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 my, my role, I have to to give in brief, uh, give in a lecture or lesson, and in front of people, some of the high rank, and let's say for instance. Uh, Every so often, I have to give a security brief uh, in my workplace. Uh, the people talk about 60, 70 people, some of them colonel, uh, major, etc., etc. And I have to stand in front of people. You know, but I, 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 I'm not afraid to do that now, but I, I was before. Yeah? And this is not, the, this is not the, 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 the worst bit to give him a, a brief. The worst piece is the last minute, two minutes, giving the chance to, to ask questions. The people, who are, especially high-ranked people, they're always challenging you for your knowledge. 
challenging your knowledge, your, your ability, your, 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 your response. And that's a difficult bit, but I, I, I cope it. So, uh, so that's why I said, yeah, uh, I, 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 mean, I, I learned a lot from, from, from my career. And um, in, my, in my 30 odd years, uh, I'm alive you know, from different levels, from, from the bottom, as in the middle class now, you see, uh, to, uh, involving a lot of management, you know, planning, organizing, and and and, and uh, obviously report as everything. Uh, but just, I found myself learning a lot throughout the 30, 30 odd years. Yes. And that's all the question I have for you. But is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, no, no I can't feel like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing uh, yourself. Oh, thank you. Uh, yourself.